Hello and welcome to Ideas Live. This Ideas Live is there for you to have answers to the kind of questions that might be coming in your mind. Chetan and I will be here to take your questions and as I can see on my screen, there are a couple of questions and we will be taking them one by one and have taking the discussion forward. So the first that I have on my screen, Chetan, is that how does one generate demand in these times? So I think uh, uh, rather than looking at generating demand in these times, it's better if we talk about generating demand in any times, right? Because there is nothing special about these times as such. Of course, there are conditions which exist exclusively to these times. But the question needs to be examined as to how do you traditionally generate demand? So I think it's about the basics to be done, going back to basic fundamentals, which is around being able to solve problems, identifying problems. There are unique problems in these times to be able to attack them. I think marketing is an, un uh, is an ignored area for people where there's not enough happening on the side of marketing because how do you generate demand in any times is through an increased awareness of times and marketing that. And I don't think people are marketing themselves well enough so marketing is an ignored opportunity to generate demand. How do you be in front of people talking about things that matter to them and not as much as you? And what is your vision for these times? I think people are uh, busy getting scared and going into their shells, but no one is coming out and communicating it to people that this is our vision for these times or this is the way we can help you overcome these times. No matter what the product or service is, it has to be made relevant to these times. But I think the fundamental answer really to that question will be, how am I or how is my business or if I'm a freelancer, how am I or if we're running an institution, how is that institution in front of people? Are you in front of people talking about what you want to talk about and are you reaching a mass audience? What these times have also done interestingly is because of the virtual platforms and because everyone's attention spans have moved online, there is a far greater mass possible. So the opportunity to create a mass reach is there. It may not be relevant to the entire mass, but that mass is there. So you'll have less conversions, but you've got to be there out of in front of people. I think what's getting missed out and the reason why this is coming as a question as to how do we generate demand in these times and people are struggling to generate demands in these times because they have withheld all their marketing budgets. They're not advertising. You're not coming up in, on social media. Yes, there's an influx of webinars and stuff, but people are tired out of them. But there's not enough marketing budget and not enough marketing thought and imagination as to how to generate demand. So the answer, the very short answer to how do I generate demand is come up with a decent marketing strategy and spend on marketing and not withhold it because there's no other way to generate demand. Absolutely right. And I think what you're pointing out too is that since people have slipped into cash conservation mode, these are some of the budgets that people are curtailing and that's probably not the right call to take in the long run. So, yeah, it's not the right call to take in the long run. And, and you know, there is also another thing to it. You are cutting budgets is one part of it, right? Cutting of budgets to your system or to you personally says that you are cutting budgets because you are anticipating for the demand to be less. I'm anticipating okay. doing less business. And because I'm anticipating doing less business, I'm cutting my marketing expenses that it's not going to convert. So it's like a vicious cycle, isn't it? That I'm, I'm, not, I'm not expecting results, so I won't invest into them. And then the question is, how do I generate demand? Well, you can't generate demand without really marketing yourself or being in front of people. So marketing does not have to really be looked at as traditional marketing but you still got to be in front of people to send them a reminder as to how you are still relevant in these times. And I think combined with certain innovations and uh, offer rejigs, so to say, marketing is one of the tools and it needs to be exploited, especially in these times when everyone's curtailed on it. It's a default competitive advantage to be in front of people. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Brilliant one. Uh, next, that uh, the question from the audience is about fear and uncertainty seems to have driven businesses in a freeze mode and an overcautious mode. So how to beat that? So yes, you're right. Of course, these are unprecedented times and therefore a degree of uncertainty, a degree of ambiguity is supposed to govern our decisions and likely so. Uh, however, uh, what Chetan said for the previous question also applies to this, that a degree of fear and uncertainty, no matter 
whatever the times are is always something that we need to fight out there is always a uncertainty there is always a fear but it just that it has become alive for us because these times we have never seen before so the the uh, strategy to combat fear strategy to beat this uncertainty is going to remain the same that you have to keep innovating that you have to actually face that and you have to come out in the open with something which is creative with something which is unique which you can use to your advantage so this is a time when you can leverage on something create a novelty or a utility factor out of it on something which you have not tried explore the dimensions of your products in a manner or your business in a manner or your personal talent in a manner that is a little unprecedented so i think leveraging on your strength is the right answer to it and uh, per se there is no one reason to overcome fear uh, fear is something that is in your imagination so there is no other way but to go out there and also, try also also really any time that we are frozen in life right there is a fear and any time the question says that we businesses are in a freeze mode and how do they get out of it now any time that you are frozen because of fear or because of some shock or something like that what do you do how long will you remain frozen and the answer is in common sense right that you'll remain frozen till you move so the idea is to move from that position the idea in a very business specific sense or in a very uh, traditional sense i think the answer would be to create momentum and that's the opposite of freezing So, how do you create momentum within your organization? If you are a small organization, how do you create momentum between the few people that work with you? How do you create momentum with your customers? How do you create momentum with your suppliers? How do you create momentum with your market? And you create momentum through action. So, if you realize that you've frozen, then don't be frozen. Create some action. It could be conversations. Action could be in just. Uh, reigniting conversations with your customers action could be in talking to your employees about something different about something positive action with your suppliers could be solving their problems action with your vendors could be but the more action that you create the more the momentum gets created and the more momentum that you create you're out of the frozen state for sure and then it's about discovering new problems and going ahead and solving them rightly said i think action is the key for all such ambiguity that we face you know uh, okay shetan has another one for you which says what are some possibilities for innovation within a company and in the external environment well that there are lots of possibilities for innovation especially when the bandwidth of systems are choked and people really don't have much to do there are lots of possibilities for innovation now without an industry specific uh, kind of a context to this question it becomes a little difficult to answer but what are the possibilities for innovation within company you've got to see what are the problems that have been created within the company right today where we stand you probably are sitting on an overabundance of resources whether human or otherwise and the idea is to utilize them better possibilities for innovation within the company one striking possibility really which people have ignored and you can expand on that is that they aren't gearing up in educating people enough to be fighting the current times for example if you're in the profession of sales they're not educated currently on how to convert video calls into uh, sales calls even leadership is not geared up to knowing how to motivate employees online right there's no good doing a monologue and saying oh yes let's come out of it it's been 6 months people don't trust that statement anymore so i think one overlooked opportunity for innovation is how do you get your employees and systems ready to be facing these times because they're going to last significant into the future another opportunity is to reject management systems because your uh, traditional human oriented systems which are traditional ways of performance management or traditional way, all that all that is kind of unneeded right now even if you're continuing with those processes so look at processes as to which are not going to serve the need that they were meant to in the new economy because people aren't occupied enough the processes that management systems put in place was assuming an 80 90% occupation of resources of people which is not there anymore right so if you're running unnecessary processes you are locking unnecessary bandwidth so rather than looking at what to innovate i think you should be asking the question what to stop doing and that itself is the beginning of innovation so i think that's one way to uh, look at the internal realities as to how they've changed 
no and that's a very interesting thought because most of the time uh, we get into that uh, you know the spiral action mode that we are just repeating mindlessly what we are supposed to do and that leads nowhere yeah. so yeah, i think more than outward it's the time also to look inward and consolidate and ease out a lot that is probably creating a lot of friction inside the system also absolutely absolutely an external environment of course it's industry specific it's very difficult to answer what innovations might be available externally so we don't know which industry has asked this question but in the external environment and i hope it comes as a question somewhere uh, the most critical innovation today is not that your business needs to change but the way it's offered to people needs to change because the way people are making buying decisions has changed right so if you have been used to for example selling on a face to face personal interaction meeting that's no longer a possibility now what offers can work virtually how do you reach a larger number of people virtually so i think the first area to look for in the external environment without knowing which industry has asked this question is to look at how your offer is structured and how do you make it easy for people to consume and absorb that offer virtually and i think that would be the area to uh, normally look for as to what kind of innovations may be possible or not even possible and you know what chetan you said uh, also brings one thought alive to my mind which is that by doing this you actually are able to crack any market barriers that you were not able to crack until now absolutely so, yeah if if i was segmented into a particular kind of a let's say metro market then this is a time that because everything is virtual i can even move to the fringes that i was never available i think people And are not realizing this really that your your suddenly your footprint is increased it's correct. you're no longer limited geographically of course you are if you running a big bulky physical product it still needs to be transported but at least in communication and sourcing of customers you no longer limited geographically right people talk about it as the end of globalization but on a very funny level on the other side of it the barriers to communication no matter anywhere in the world today have been removed because people are open to trusting you virtually and i think that's a critical shift in mindset that people need to Absolutely. think beyond a geographical restriction great let's move to the next question uh, how do we better utilize our resources in these time so again uh, it's the best and the better utilization whatever you want to name it comes from making optimum use of it in the given situation which is by making them look inward by leaning them out by structuring your processes by putting them into let's say whether educating them whether making them learn whether giving them a little degree of freedom as to what is it that they want to create now this is a wonderful opportunity to my mind that this is a time when people are into a situation that they are forced to think differently the the situation is such that everyone is wanting to attempt a crack at something different if you can allow what some of many progressive companies have done that okay can you come up with an idea which is creative can you spend 10% 15% of your time doing any project in the company that you feel you want to run and make your own team think of what barriers you might be able to cross in the long run there could be someone in some department who is sitting with an idea on the table and you can bring something up in no time and, yeah, and, uh, and really i would something. invite these people also to think of what are these resources there for right for example you have certain resources and it's supposed to do a certain task and that task is supposed to create certain value for you within the company or, or let's say in a very traditional sense a return on investment i think what people are missing out is on questioning whether they need to even utilize all their resources because there's a cost associated with utilizing resources in the first place right if you are kind of freed up in your bandwidth today do you really need all your sap systems and your MISs to run because if there's nothing to report and you're still insisting that 30 day reports come to you that's a waste of resources whether human whether technological whether electronic anything that's a waste of resources because there's nothing to report if you're gathering 20 people in a room today or in a zoom call today and asking them constantly to be doing ideation meetings or asking them to have cash preservation meetings or what that's a waste of resources how many times are you going to do it 
So how do you better utilize your resources? I think the question is, how do you not utilize the resources that are not needed? And that's saving in the first place. Now, what is the, before answering the question, how to utilize resources, what are your end results? And for those end results, what resources do you need? And from the resources, as I was suggesting in the previous step that I've got freed up, feed it into the end result that you want. Supposing your end result is to get more sales from the customer and you have only 20 people with you selling, get rid of your accounts department, put them in sales because there's no accounting to be done. Now you suddenly have 40 and now go out and sell. So the idea is to stop using certain resources and double them up in regards to the goals that you want to achieve. I think, Chetan, what you're pointing out to is something very critical. Most of the time, and especially in our Indian companies, we are boxed to mapping people to the functions Absolutely. that they are doing. So that this has this platform and this time has allowed for those kind of flexibility in the system. And really, right. that's an answer. That's an answer to what internal innovation is needed. Someone was asking that question. So there is Correct. a... Yeah, yeah. Precisely. So this is that if you can allow, because right now, whether it is your sales or your legal or your accounts or your any department, everyone is available to you on one channel. So this is really the right time to have those cross functional team, to have those job mobility and all the aspirations which you were thinking of doing inwardly, actually try and experiment because as it is, there is less to lose and you might gain in the process, in fact. So that that is a very pertinent point. Yes. And I think uh, you've how? already answered the next question, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. So better utilize people and yes, invest in their learning. We we have always uh, brought this up whenever possible that while uh, as Chetan spoke about marketing, same is the case with training. Uh, these are times when normally when we are in preservation mode, we cut our budgets on marketing, we cut our budgets on training. But the right way and the progressive way is not to cut them, but to capitalize on them. Also, so a question on how do we better utilize our people in these times? Uh, what can you can't physically utilize people in these times, right? There is a restriction in it. You can mentally utilize them, and are they mentally equipped and trained to be getting utilized in these times? I think what people have done by increasing these insecurities and fear and negative conversation is actually reduced mental outputs of people. You've got them to worry. You've got them to be insecure you've got them to think about their livelihood and i think you've already killed the mental utilization so give them security give them a vision give them a sense of purpose for the future make them believe that you are in business and you're going to be and very critical the way people think and when people think is a function directly of what they anticipate if i anticipate growth i will stretch my mind if i anticipate degrowth i have nothing to do i just have to sit and wait so what are you anticipating is the critical question to ask. If you're anticipating something positive, if you're anticipating growth, it'll make your people think and there's some utilization. And then what Roly was saying, then if you are anticipating growth, then train people for growth. Otherwise, wait for failure. And the best utilization of people, before you go to that, I think, best utilization of your own mind would be to come out of this mindset that economy is in a bad cycle and doom and stuff expect growth and you have certain actions to take if you're expecting the economy to decline you have to do nothing sit back it will decline well said uh, what is the best use of capital right now certainly not to save <laughs> so so my view would be if you're talking about in uh, reference to your own business, of course, uh, put it into uh, something where you are able to innovate or come out with something which has been you have been incubating for some time. If not, if you're talking about as to what are the opportunities to invest, uh, I think a spot for small businesses which have the potential to disrupt. Normally, after a crisis, these are the companies that if we are able to sustain and if they have an idea which is worth disrupting, they will be the one who will be emerging out as winners once the crisis is over. So I think apply your intelligence and money if you can spot such opportunities. Now is the time. If you're talking about brands which are high profile, since the stock prices might be down, that could be one way to invest. But that's a no brainer for you if uh, you know you are buying those stocks and shares. I personally would feel that it, the right use of capital at this point is into investing something which can actually be the creation for tomorrow. Yep, and I have another answer to this. What's the best use of capital right now? You are talking about the return on capital invested, right? 
where can you invest your capital that will give you the best return obviously a while later when the economy is better if your answer is not your own business then you're in trouble already right so best use of your capital is within your own business now how do you invest and where do you invest in your business so that you get the maximum return on it my answer is the best return that you can get into the future is acquire market share because this is the opportunity the best way to acquire market share again going back to the first question that we answered is get in front of the customers expand your marketing footprint be visible create offers that people like it's not about making a heavy bottom line today but it's about making a breath a breath of an impact today so that you're able to create use this capital and if you have some use the capital to acquire and invest in market share to acquire market shares and that's the highest rate of investment or return on investment that you will get once the situation improves if you are thinking of buying other businesses and stuff i would say first exhaust your own before looking at another business because if your best use of capital is not your own business you're in the wrong business already and you have different questions to answer rather than thinking of the use of capital right so invest in marketing invest in innovation invest in people there's nothing else nothing else will pay you more than that what kind of upsides should people think about and how do we leverage on that so i think upsides are phenomenal every crisis has a hidden opportunity in it so whether you are talking it from a personal angle or from a business angle irrespective upsides are phenomenal these upsides could be related to as we have been speaking whether incubating and innovating in your own space these upsides could be related to your own skill development these upsides could be related to something that you might have been thinking of experimenting and have put on hold and now is the time because now everyone is on ground zero so per se if you were trying to attempt something now is the time to create it so there is a lot of upside and i think leverage can only come from what chetan talked about a while ago is about taking that action yeah. take that first step is itself a great upside and one has to remember that bad times are very forgiving so your mistakes are forgiven in the market uh, and anything that you want to experiment with all your ideas that you were scared to attempt earlier now is the time because no one's going to hold you accountable the customers are going to forget it as a bad mistake markets are forgiving in bad times uh, in terms of customer experience i'm not talking about stock market results and stuff so the upsides that you should look for is try and innovate i would even go to the extent to saying that there are certain segments in the market who are willing to pay higher today than they were in a downturn so don't get guided by this concept that the demand is low and so prices have to be low no there is an upside there will be a demand today for premium products because the trust has gone out of survivability so there is a demand for premium products you can try premium products today there is a demand for something innovative people are willing to trust online that's a big behavioral change at least in india for me people weren't trusting online things all throughout this incubation period but today because that choice is taken out people are willing to trust you online and if you and businesses in india aren't really at least the b2b environment is not yet online so that's the biggest leverage point for you that use this time it should have already been done by the way but if it hasn't then that's the upside because that's going to be the future so get online whether it's a b2b environment crack it because that's going to be the future how do you do your consulting projects online if you're in travel industry how do you get to people to trust you online even if you're in a commodity business or you might be selling cars you'll have to crack the online model otherwise there will be no upside and that's the biggest upside and your failures today in trying to do that are completely forgiven so it's the best time to create that upside there is so much advice and information overload how to process the useful from not so useful what to believe and not believe in so much contradiction this is an interesting one chetan right so yeah, yeah. so you shouldn't be watching this <laughs> <laughs> i was about to say you should log out from our webinars at least <laughs> <laughs> there is an advice and information overload of course anyone and everyone who could do a webinar or could do a digital product has started doing one so we get to you and 
on the other side of information overload really there's a lot of opinions you don't know who to trust because there are a lot of opinions on different news channels there are different opinions on newspapers and whatever it is that you read so everyone has an opinion as to how long this will be everyone has an opinion on what's the best strategy forward and everyone has an opinion on whether you should be bullish or bearish and we get you what you're asking how to process the useful from not so useful it's very simple what is it that you are good at and your company is good at regardless of the situation of the economy keep doing that because whether the economic cycle lasts 2 years or whether this lasts 4 years or whether this lasts 2 months what are your strengths what are the strengths that uh, are prevalent in your group of people in your ecosystem and you need to leverage on that you can't leverage on someone else's strengths so that's the thing to do what to believe and not to believe believe what suits you because in the end a belief is that it's a belief it's not the truth really so believe in what suits you believe that you will come out of it believe that there is growth possible because there are businesses within this lockdown that are going to grow and if you believe in something which is positive and if you believe in that growth story you will force your people and your mind to be thinking of innovations that are relevant to creating that growth story rather than accepting that nothing's going to happen in these times So my filter is that that if there is something that's dragging me towards a negative story, I just block it, even if it's the truth. Well said. And this information load is not going to go anywhere. You know, with I mean, the digital world has its own uh, nuances, and this is one of the nuances. And maybe we have got more caught into it because of all this turning virtual and things online. But otherwise, also it was available to us at the click of a finger. And it's not so, a new thing. Information overload was always there. It, always. It's hurting people today because they're looking for an answer. So stop looking for an answer. Right? There's no one who's going to come and tell you how to run your business and come out of this crisis. You're going to have to do it by your anticipation and by believing in your. It's the traditional management fundamental stuff. Do your fundamentals right. There's no need to believe anyone, including us. I think Chetan, you are so tempted to say this every time. Don't believe us, you know. <laughs> you get one opportunity to say that, and you would say that. So yeah, <laughs> and I second him on that. I agree. You know, take your own calls. <laughs> yeah, don't believe us. Go try this stuff, and then then choose whether it was right or wrong. But just otherwise, when we are choosing to believe, Roli, whether someone's choosing to believe you or me, you're doing it on convenience. If I'm already thinking the way you are thinking, you will believe. If I'm not thinking the way you're thinking, you won't believe. Either way, it doesn't add value because it's not the truth. True. Yeah. So go out and explore and be yeah. present to what actually matters. I think that's the way for it. What is your view on cash conservation? So conservation, any kind of conservation or preservation the can best, only the best way land. to conserve more is to generate more. So. that's my view on cash conservation go ahead and generate some cash don't worry about saving what you have use it spend it wisely uh, we've given lots of answers on how to use in this particular segment on marketing on innovation on creating offers on saving from your resources but if you are sitting in a pile of cash and only worried about conserving it will only take you that many years that it can last so the best way to conserve cash is still to generate more the best way to generate more in these times is to acquire market shares and invest in marketing and innovation and in your people up their skills so that they're able to get more bang for your buck so to say so there is no cash conservation strategy that you'll ever get out of roli and me the all that you will get is the best way to conserve cash is to find a way to earn more if you can't find a way to earn more then shut the business put it in a bank account you'll get 6% True, which to in this times of economy should sound like a growth to you if you are coming from this mindset of conservation. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> any specific market areas that you suggest for bringing a business upside? So as Chetan talked about it, so we'll reiterate that uh, being out there. being in front of your customers whatever your channel whosoever are your collaboration partners i think that is now you can do that through a social media you can do that through virtual platforms you can do that some innovation or a town hall kind of an activity is your call to take but the nutshell is that you need to be out there you need to be out there with your vulnerabilities with your promises and with your growth story 
so it's it's understood at this time that every business is going through crisis so not that people are looking uh, up to you that you will come and you will be the god and the savior in uh, that armor right so just being out there honestly talking out to them telling about your plans actually investing into them actually being concerned about what's happening into their lives so many town halls i have been privy to uh, it saddens me to say but the mds and ceos of the top shot companies end up talking mostly about what are my plans for growth and this is what we have done this is what we have acquired where is actually the concern for your people for whom you are doing the town hall so can you talk to them and be in front of them whether it is your channel partners your dealers i think you know we used to spend so much on these dealers and distributor conferences when in person you know we will hire a five star hotel and do these dealer distributor conferences there i haven't seen any uh, you know top notch ceo md promoter actually doing these dealers and distributor conferences online right. why not right. i mean so so the modality can be anything point is and we will you, you be honest and be in touch really you mention online and that gives me an idea with the question they're asking any specific marketing ideas the world has moved online right there is no physical space of billboards or whatever it is the traditional media the world has moved online has your marketing effort completely 99% of it moved online and if it hasn't then you're not in the market right now right all interactions today are happening online anything i need read order books to my mangoes to anything to air conditioners is all online if every buying behavior has moved online has your marketing moved online as your social media presence is that your number one priority in your company right now is online marketing digital enablement of your customers your number one priority right now and if it is not you're not with the current times you're still in 2019 and that's over so marketing ideas that can bring you a business upside is to move into the online space it's here to stay now it's not going to entirely move offline ever and that's what you really need to be investing in is to capture that online space indian businesses i would again say barring a few industries are far behind the online space with the global counterparts and that's a scary situation because the businesses are all global and they'll start eating into our market shares so move online acquire those skills train your people do whatever it is needed to get them skilled up to capture a share of not the mind space to capture a share of the online mind space and there's a big difference traditionally we used to thinking of capturing mind space by traditional media or television ads and stuff even television is out right now because i am spending maximum time today in front of this computer screen and not in front of the television screen not in front of the newspaper So what's your online marketing strategy whether you're selling a newspaper or you're selling an automobile or you're selling an aircraft it doesn't matter it has to be done online You know Chetan and this also makes me uh, wonder about another aspect of this uh, upside that is possible marketing is one tangent how many businesses have actually thinking of their service quotient going on Absolutely none of them Uh, none people, of them your especially really the people who are in traditional manufacturing businesses who assume that they have a sales set up a channel a distributor aren't even thinking that there's a possibility thinking. online and the danger is they'll get disrupted by someone who does right i mean your customer relationship management needs to move online your service needs to move online your complaint resolution time and tats need need to move online none of the businesses the big businesses have had they haven't it's the new age companies which are still doing good and which are thinking about it the traditional companies who are having that foothold we have questions from airline industry okay we are in crisis we have questions from hotel industry that we are in crisis and these two are such industries where by my own personal example i can say that your customer service is too bad and i'm talking of one of the five stars and one of the coveted air industry segment Absolutely. so what has happened there in that and segment really the most interesting business that was conducted online recently was the government of india buying rafale jets and the final negotiations have taken place online precisely lockdown new delhi is in lockdown but the jets have arrived and those discussions have been online right so if that's the level of dealings that can take place online your business is not going to be an exception right everyone considers this to be a high risk volatile times how do we deal with that <laughs> don't believe it <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> See, these are high risk volatile times. Uh, in terms of, yes, the demand has dried up and economy has dried up. Movement of goods is not that simple anymore. If you're in an airline or a hotel industry, your business is virtually kind of on a standstill. So, yes, there are high risk times. I don't consider them especially volatile times, but yeah, they're high risk times. But any time is high risk if you forget to innovate and rise up to the time. So, economy has changed. It's not necessarily gone down or up. It's changed. People who are changing with it or who are adjusting to it would still be doing business in this economy. And that's what I think we've been talking about in this entire session today. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with anything that's high risk is you mitigate the risk, right? If your house becomes high risk to live in today because it's at a high risk of fire, you would get fire extinguishers or you would paint your walls differently or get some fireproof material. You certainly won't just keep sitting and hoping nothing would happen. So if your business has entered that high risk zone, you've got to insulate it with something that's low risk. And what's low risk today? Rejig your offers, rejig your innovations, get a better marketing strategy. You're still worried about old ways of marketing when people are not even having eyeballs. Their eyeballs are online. People are buying differently. Are you selling differently? Are your products looking different? Are they reworked in offers to make me believe that I'm at a lower risk trusting you? All these things is you, what you've got to do to be able to make your business low risk in perception of others. And if you're able to do that, you've adjusted to the times. Absolutely. So innovation remains always the key, whether it's the time of so-called volatility or it is not. I mean, innovation is always and I'll tell something. You, the biggest risk that a business is in today is to not invest in marketing and capturing market shares because the one who does will end up capturing yours. So that's the biggest risk to sit, conserve cash and do nothing. That's the highest risk more than the COVID-19 risk. What should a sales strategy be to create to growth? growth? Okay, so I, I think you're wanting to have a specifically on the business to business uh, segment. And I think some of the points we've already covered that it's about making your presence felt. It's about interacting with your channels and getting your B2B strategy to the level of that, you know, all your deals, all your negotiations, your closures, your agreements, your processes, everything that is required to be done into a B2B kind of a pitch is possible virtually. So there is no doubt to moving it virtual. And I think since you're talking about B2B specifically, this is an easy thing to attempt because most often the not B2B uh, kind of interactions are still somehow exposed to these kind of channels. So the part that is required is to get perfect at it. The part that is required is to enable some attraction into that model whereby this is closing for you, whereby you are restructuring your design or product or offering in a manner that it is catering to the need of your customer right now. I think two things that come to my mind in this. Uh, there's got to be a component of your sales today that are done that's done automated online. Whether you're selling a car or an aircraft or cement or a bus or a Coke can or a mobile phone, People who have made a decision and are willing to buy and don't need a physical interaction should be able to go buy that online automated. One part of your sales strategy is that your product, regardless of whatever customization is needed in it, should eliminate the manual interface and be available for whoever has to buy. Second part of it is where the products need a manual interface where a salesperson needs to interact. Now, there are two problems traditionally. You need to be able to generate leads and you need to be able to close those leads. Your leads today will come only online. So forget all your traditional methods. And as we were answering to the marketing question, have a lead generation mechanism online, whether you do it through webinars or creating marketing funnels or through your website, but it has to be online. It's a different way of thinking and you need people who are ready with that way of thinking. After your lead generations, if it needs a manual interface, you've got to ask your question, what have you done in the last six months? Are your salespeople today ready to interact with the lead? If I give you a 20-minute meeting today, are you ready to close me within 20 minutes and that too virtually? If you're not, you're still in 2019. Welcome to 2020. Get ready because it's here to stay.
All right. The next that I have on my screen is how to ensure that employees are energized and motivated to overcome than to succumb. Oh, I have a lot to say on that. So I think for me, it begins with trust. And uh, a lot of times I've heard this discussion that, you know, now since everyone has mostly working from home, I think the first thing to keep them energized and motivated is to be present to this fact. Working from home traditionally is something leaving IT sectors and some of project based sectors we have not been exposed to. There is an inherent assumption that when you're working from home, there is a comfort that is setting in. And I think that is where the element of trust needs to come in because what crisis is there has impacted you also, their families also and them also all in the same way. So that element of trust that whatever is happening and they are there to attend to it, that is the first foundation for keeping them energized and motivated. Please be present to their needs. If you used to switch off communication with them after they left office at whatever time they left, even if it is about working from home and if it is not an emergency situation, these are very minute to do's, but they really you know, dictate the morale quotient of the employee. That, it, that element of trust, that degree of flexibility that you used to offer, it shouldn't have that hidden thing that, oh, you're working from home and you're having a merry time, which some of the times we do fall privy to. Yeah. And as far as the positive aspect of keeping them energized, these are all hygienes that I talked about. The positive aspects of being energized and motivated, I think work is the best motivator. Allow them to work with that freedom that we have been advocating. Let them innovate. Let them propose an idea. Let them allow to innovate rather than just follow a bureaucratic process, which you probably made for a time when you were sitting in the office. It may be okay to need 10 approvals when you are in an office, but it's not possible to have those 10 approvals when you are working online. Yeah. Can you Absolutely. step up those to, systems and processes? To kind of, to kind of sum up, I have two, three things. One is that there are two, three things that will keep people energized in any situation. One we discussed earlier in this particular webcast was momentum. Create momentum. If you create momentum, people don't need motivation because things are happening. Create anticipation. So momentum and anticipation. If I'm anticipating poorly, then no matter what you say to me, I can't be motivated because you're never motivated for a poor outcome. You're motivated for a better outcome. So what are you making your people anticipate? Are they anticipating a quick turnaround economy to grow and business to go up? If not, if they're anticipating business to go down, what do you motivate them for? Right? If I'm anticipating, for example, that I'm going to lose the match, then I'm not really motivated to play. So what is the anticipation? And then the third thing that people would get motivated by is taking decisions. Right? So put decision-making power in the hands of people, get them to feel important, and those are the three things that you need to do. Momentum, anticipation, and decision. It's got a formula that's called MAD. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you need to do. A bit of madness wouldn't hurt. A bit of madness always helps, yes. <laughs> uh, I am reading it as how do we redesign offering? I suppose that's what was meant, that how do we redesign offering to make sense to today's market? Of course, to address to the needs of whatever has changed for the customer. Now, that need could be ease of getting to that product, that, that need could have been a feature that needs to be included, that ease could be including an offering which makes it uh, lucrative for them, that ease could be even offering on discounts or cash, that depends on which okay, product can, industry. Can, uh, can take that line. Uh, we were discussing yesterday, Roli and I were discussing with a client on disruptive innovation and there were three conditions for creating a disruptive innovation is you make your product either more affordable or you make it simpler, or you make it more convenient. And I think those are the three ways to rejig your offerings today. Either make it more, or do all three, make it more affordable in terms of end value for a customer and they're likely to take a risk. Make it simpler to acquire and use than other products in the market and make it more convenient for it to reach people without going through multiple channels and distributors and retail channels. And if you do these three things, that's the way to rejig the offering, to make it either more affordable, more simpler and more convenient. And I think that would be a good enough way or a good enough lens to look into it. And I think we have the last question for the day, Roli. That's oh, a good one. What is the role of the leader today? So I would love to answer it by saying that the role of the leader is in such times actually leading from behind rather than leading from front.
because there is a lack of what is going to happen a foresight a planning per se everyone is into that mode of that there are so many external factors that are going to determine what's going to happen lead from behind be that rock behind your people and allow them that freedom to explore to learn to be comfortable to be able to and be present to them i th i think being present to them is something that most of the times and because of this crisis and this conservation mode and this growth hazard leaders have opted out from doing but i think being present to them and being there more as a support of rock from behind rather than being the pull from the front uh, is required because pull you will be able to create as soon as you know there is some opening that you are able to watch for yourself Uh, yeah. Also, that. I think leadership about today are your people, by virtue of your presence, feeling that you're in control and you will take care regardless of what happens. If that's the feeling you've been able to communicate, you've done fifty percent of the job. If people are feeling unsettled, they're not quite knowing which way this will go. If they're not quite sure of what will happen, then you have failed as a leader. Of course, there are situations in business and realities and economies and stuff, but that's why we need a leader to be able to show the path through whatever shows up. So, are you confident in the first place, right? Are you? Do you aspire or do you inspire confidence in people? And I think that comes through as to how secured and how assured assured of yourself you are. And if you are, you'll know the way through, and so will your people. The other thing I think what leaders need to do today. is to change which has come as questions as well is to change the kind of dialogues that people are having around them it could be your family it could be your business environment your colleagues your people are they having positive conversations are they thinking that we will come out of it are they thinking innovations are they thinking capturing of market share you might not make that much money but you can make that much difference still right and as a leader are you leading in that direction are you present to your team is what roly was saying there's only one way to scale up businesses or scale up anything in life is through people and people would prefer to work with people that are trustable and the role of a leader as we've said many times earlier roly in any situation in any situation throughout history people will judge you to be a good leader when you develop more leaders so i think that would remain your fundamental role unchanged in any time whatsoever if people look up to you and they're willing to emulate you and they're willing to be like you that means you're likely to develop far more leaders and if you're doing that that's the role of the leader absolutely and that applies to any time pre yeah. or post crisis yeah. so great we, we had fun uh, answering your questions and uh, we'll be back sometime later with some other intriguing topic till then it's bye from me and from chetan chetan over to uh, you for the fun. i'm sure you have many more questions we are thankful for those of you who have sent these questions if you have more questions put them in the comments below and next time we'll be happy to take them as well Thank you for being here. Thank you from me and Rolly. See you again sometime soon.